We begin with our discussion on equity valuation and this is the first uh, section and first video in our broad uh, discussion of uh, valuation. The first unit of uh, equity valuation is an introductory one and uh, in this section we are going to kind of talk about what is valuation, uh, why do we do valuation, what are the broad methods of doing valuation and what are the things that we have to keep in mind and understand while approaching any kind of valuation. Valuation itself is an extension of some of the stuff that we've already studied, uh, more specifically the corporate finance uh, stuff, applied corporate finance that we have gone through. And uh, generally speaking, that the, the sections that we had studied in financial statement analysis uh, and financial management are also going to get extended here, right? Now, while broadly we have seen the, the concept of valuation and you know how do we go about uh, valuing a bond or a stock in a very generic format, this subject or this course basically goes one step beyond and starts looking at understanding what are the specific problems that we're going to kind of identify and face while trying to evaluate a real life company, right? This is also going to be primarily equity valuation in nature. We're going to look at what, uh, how do you go and value the equity of a company and not necessarily the debt of the company, right? So without much ado, let's start with the first broad discussion around this topic, which is the value of something, right? Now, let's just play a small game here. Let's assume that I were to take a box like this. It's a gift box. It's uh, it, it's got something in it. I have wrapped it up and I now ask you for how much you would be willing to pay for it, right? So you can pay something and buy this box from me. What would your answer be, right? Now assume that there is no other information. I have not given a hint of what could be inside that box. I am just asking all of us about bids for this particular box, right? So what do you think is the bidding going to be when we are looking at this particular box. Now, we are a class of uh, a certain number of students and we can actually play this exercise where you think that there is something inside this box and you could start anywhere from INR zero all the way up to, let's say, I put a range here, let's say INR 5000, right? So it's greater than INR zero or less than INR 5000 that's the bid that you have to put in, right? Now, there's no other information that is available. What are the things that you will base your judgment on? What are the various things that you will think about without any other information in place, right? Now, let's try and think about it, what your bid would be. It could be a simple guess that comes out. It's an open market. All of us are bidding in the same room. So, Possibly one of the things that would that would come to your mind while looking at this bid would be reputation of the seller, right? You know me or you do not know me. What is my reputation? Do you think I will shortchange you? Do you think I will charge higher for something but not provide enough quality in what is there in the box? If you think that, you will not bid high. If you think my reputation is very good, then you will bid high. You will probably be bid higher, thinking that there's something interesting in this particular box, right? What else? It would probably depend on the demand and supply, right? Supply is fixed, but your demand here is what is uh, what is going to drive the price here, right? What are we looking at? We're trying to look at what is the exact amount of price that you will pay for something like this, right? So. What is the demand that uh, that this box carries, right? You might also base your, uh, base your judgment on what other people do. So what is the bid that other people are giving in this particular context? What are the actions of other people around you? Are they bidding 100 or 200 or 500 or 700? Based on which you might base your judgment and try and get to this value. And Probably one more thing that could play on your mind is if you knew something like this happened earlier, if you knew this kind of bid happened earlier, then what's the historical 
trend around it right what was the price that was paid the last time this bid happened what was the kind of gift expected the last time this kind of bid happened if you have any information on that you will probably base your judgment on on these parameters right so there are broadly these set of parameters and you could you could try and define what was your reasoning behind coming up with this particular price point for this particular gift or this particular box right so in that context it is absolutely imperative that you look at all these factors and try and understand as to what is it that is driving your behavior in terms of arriving at the value of what is inside this box right these principles are the same which we will extend when we value a security right so what data points would your decisions depend on your desire to buy this box which will result in some sort of a demand or supply scenario if you really want to buy this then your demand is higher and in which case you will be willing to pay higher your expectation of my behavior and what i can pack in this box what your peers bid for it if no one really bids for it you'll bid 1 rupee and win it if everyone starts bidding for it then you will start kind of putting in what your thought is behind this particular exercise and try and put a number which will definitely be reflected of what your peers have bid for this particular box and finally history if there was a bid like this that had happened in the past what was really paid the last time such a bidding happened right and based on these four decision points you're going to arrive at some sort of value of what is there inside this particular box right now the value of something what we realize in this exercise is that regardless of whether we have information or not about the product right that's an important point regardless of whether we have information or not about the product we arrive at some sense of valuation of the box it may or may not be correct but definitely gives an estimate of the contents of the box it also talks about our behavior as investors some of us may be conservative some of us may be aggressive this might be really evident from our bidding behavior some of us might not want to bid beyond a certain price others may have gone aggressive and bid beyond uh, a certain number and that be bidding behavior tells us about the kinds of players when i say players these could be investors who are looking for a slightly longer term play in the market or traders who are looking for short term benefits out of this this could tell us what kind of behavior do we carry when we are playing in the financial markets when we are playing the game of valuing something specifically right that's the value of something now just like the box any asset or company can be valued by using investor estimates of its uh of its value right now a stock market is a place where all the bidders are bidding for the asset and thereby helping at arriving at a price point the value that we believe should be the correct reflection of an asset should be based on the expectations of uh, the returns that you can generate from any particular asset and this is known as the intrinsic value also known as the fair value of the asset right now when we are bidding for a stock or a bond or for that matter any kind of security in the financial markets the the thought process behind that is when i buy something for x amount what is my return on on the amount x that i have invested correct that's basically what drives my behavior in terms of the valuation there could be methods that we could use to arrive at this particular value but in a sense this is the intrinsic value of the asset that we are looking at right now our box examples also tell us something about valuation as an exercise valuation is rarely precise and there would be biases all the way in our assumptions of the price of an asset right so it's rarely precise if it was precise it would become uh, a sort of a fixed risk free kind of a security because we can arrive at the pricing with zero 
volatility and 100% certainty. So valuation depends on a lot of factors which we've already seen. What's our bidding behavior? What's what's our expectation from the asset? What's history been like? What's the market condition like? And we would know that there would be biases all along our way in our assumption of the price of an asset, right? My assumption of a company may not be the same as your assumption of a company. You might genuinely believe that a company might do well. I may have my reservations on the same, right? So these biases play a lot of uh, role in terms of our arriving at the final price of a particular asset, right? On now, what is the core objective of valuation, right? Why do valuation in the first place, right? Now, forget about the requirement in terms of finance. On a broad behavioral level, our minds are hardwired to value and compare things. We do it even subconsciously. We don't even know about it. While buying anything, we use this concept called value for money, right? How much we are paying and what is the benefit we are deriving out of what we have paid. It is nothing but the fact that we want to derive the highest benefit for the price we are paying, right? And the primary objective of valuation is to ensure that the correct price is paid or received, right? That's what we are trying to do when we are sending, when we are buying something, we want to pay the appropriate price. When we are selling something, we want to receive the appropriate price. This could be to buy or sell a stock, a land, a house, a company or sell any of these, right? The idea is to maximize our profit potential from such a deal, which is basically buy and sell. So effectively sell minus buy has to be maximized. And that's why it is necessary for us to try and arrive at a value. Now, even if we don't come up with a precise estimate of what we think is the value on a behavioral level, we will anyway do it right. Right from anything that we are buying on our day to day basis, we will compare things. We will try and arrive at an understanding on whether what we are paying is a correct estimate of what we are going to derive out of it. Right. That's an important construct. Now, in the financial services industry, it assumes paramount importance, right? whether we are buying shares, we are selling them, working in the corporate finance division of a firm that is acquiring another firm or issuing bonds. Valuation is an integral part of the overall process. That's an important part of the overall process. And what are so that's that's the broad idea on why do we do valuation because it's an integral part whatever we do in finance it is important that we try and arrive at some sort of an estimate of what is the price of a particular uh, particular uh, security right now what are the methods used by people who are buying while buying or selling securities while buying or selling securities while playing in financial markets what are the broad methods right now in finance there are possibly three ways of investing or trading right now when you look at these three ways the first one is called fundamental analysis which is the projection of fundamentals or future earnings of the asset being valued or what is known as the intrinsic value of the assets that's what we are trying what is the relevant inherent value of the asset right that's what is the fundamental analysis bit the second is something called as technical analysis. Now, what does technical analysis mean? Studying the historical price performance of the asset price. People typically use charts. So stock price charts are what are used to understand investor behavior and preferences. What technical analysis believes is that historical behavior kind of gets uh, repeated in the future. So effectively, just by observing the behavior of a large chunk of investors, which is what derives the stock price, we can observe what might happen in the future as well. So that's technical analysis. And there could be other methods, which could be things like quantitative investing. You're just looking at mathematics to find out which are the companies which are above a certain profit level, which are the companies which are above a certain sales level. These are screeners essentially. So you are screening for stocks trying to arrive at what is the what is the actual uh, set of stocks that you're going to do a valuation on. 
Now, there's no right or wrong way. People follow the method that works for them. A lot of the people combine either two or three of these. So that, that plays out. Some people, for example, use uh, fundamental analysis to understand what is the intrinsic value of a stock and then use technical analysis to figure out what is a good point to buy or sell it, right? Because charts tell you whether the stock is expected to go up or go down. That's an entirely different uh, story altogether. There are 5,000 stocks that are there in the market. How do you find out which one should you do your analysis on? So there you might start using something kind of a screening and then move to fundamental analysis, right? In general, there should be just these three ways of investing or trading. Investing is typically long term. Trading is typically short term, right? So I shouldn't generalize these terms, but broadly that's the maximum people who are investors would look at the longer term premise of something and maximum people who are traders would typically play for the short term in the market, right? Now, fundamental analysis is the process of trying to find the intrinsic value of the company. And since we are trying to find the intrinsic value of the company, we're going to spend our time in this course studying about the various methods that can be used for fundamental analysis. So our focus in this particular course is going to be solely and solely on fundamental analysis. How do we arrive at the intrinsic value of the share of the company is our broad objective of this curriculum. As we come to an end of this particular section, we kind of talk about a question here. Explain what factors drive our estimates of value of a security. Thank you.